G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today I have a bit of a vlog for you, so mixing up the content a little bit. Uh, today I'm going to talk about monster hunting. Uh, what is it um, and my past uh, being a monster hunter. Some of the things that I learned, some of the benefits and some of the negatives. So I've actually put a bit of thought into this one. Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to go for. As you guys know, I like to have a bit of a chat. I like to talk. Um, it could go for 10 minutes. It could go for one hour, I've got no idea. So let's just get started. So I'm gonna tell you guys my history. So a lot of people um, who might not know me or are new to the channel will say to me, G-Man, who are you? And how are you credentialized to come on here uh, and talk to men about you know women and, and, and life and all that sort of thing? And the answer I have for you guys is, I'm not a pickup artist. Uh, I'm not a dating expert. I'm not a dating coach. I'm not an expert on women. I'm just a guy who's been out there. And I would dare argue without bragging, I've probably had more experience than most average men that aren't full-time pickup artists, you know. How am I credentialized, guys? I'll get started. So essentially, I'm, I'm almost 40 years old. Right? I'm turning 40 next year, so 39. Throughout my life, I've had... One longer term serious girlfriend, probably three or so years, uh, it was a bit patchy. So, you know, in and out of the monster hunting market as well with her in my early 20s. And then in my mid 20s to about 30, um, I was de facto with a woman and got married, right? So, give or take, let's just say 10 years, let's round it 10 years. I got started when I was about 15. So I've got about 15 solid years of extensive womanizing, guys. I've, um, it was something that I just felt like I was good at. I was natural at it from a very young age. And so I'm going to start telling you all a bit about it and how I come up with my jokes and how I come up with my characters because a lot of that stuff is based, uh, or that all is based on real life uh, experiences. So I got started... Let's, go, let's, let's, go, let's, let's wind the clock back. All right, it's going back in time. The pages are ripping off the, the calendar. Let's go back to the year 2000. I was about 15 years old in 2000. And that was just when uh, like cable fiber internet came in. So previously, you know, you had to dial up. The, um, the cable internet came in. And I had a connection in my bedroom, right? Very big mistake from the parents when I had my desktop computer. And let's just say that combination of, um, you know, that fiber optic um, cable connection and a computer in a teenager's bedroom, um, back in those days, recipe for disaster, right? <laughs> recipe for disaster. Uh, uh, yeah, let's just say a lot of bad things happen in there. But in terms of monster hunting, I just sort of fell into it. So guys, when I was young, when I was a teenager, uh, I was very sort of, um, I was always been quite outgoing. I've always been really good at talking, communicating, you know, been a bit of a funny guy, a bit of a, a, a larrikin. Uh, but I wasn't always some, um, you know, uh, super confident guy with women. That just came um, over time. And so, guys, I got started and where I did most of my monster hunting, just so you guys know, I'm not a pickup artist. So I never very rarely picked up women unless it fell into my lap in person um, or in nightclubs and stuff like that. I did all of my damage um, on dating websites, chat rooms, and I, more recently, uh, over the last, say, 10 years, uh, dating apps, you know, Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, and all that. So I'll go back to it, guys. I was 15 years old, going back into G-Man's bedroom as a teenager, all right? Um, I had this chat service, right? It was called Merck. I'm not sure if you guys who are not in Australia would know what this thing is, but Merck was like, a, I think it was like an open source chat you know hosting program and uh, it was really old school uh, there were many different like rooms like chat rooms you could join and i used to i used to go into like the teenage chat or the you know the dandenong chat or the melbourne chat guys i'm from victoria melbourne um and i would just trawl in there you know this is back in the days of you know when you had nothing to go from so i used to go in there and chat up chicks right but i used to love it i used to sit there all day long this is before you could even um Digital cameras, right? That was expensive. And like, you know, you had to have money and a bit of a setup to get the photo on and, you know, then send it and all that sort of stuff. So that was pretty advanced back then. That didn't exist. So there was no knowing or validating what these women ever looked like until you met them. So you remember back in the day, so you guys who might be around my age, 
Remember good old ASL, age, sex, uh, location. That was always one of the opening lines. I used to go on there, um, chat up girls, uh, and take a risk every time. This was absolute monster hunting as a best because it's blind dating, right? Blind dating with the unknown. It could be a dude. It could be a 50-year-old man rock up. I don't know. They say they're a 15 or 16-year-old girl or 17-year-old girl, you know, and I'm the same age. I used to go and meet them at, and I used to jump on the train line. So guys, I used to jump on the Frankston train line and I would go up and down and I'd end up over the west, you know, I'd go to, you know, Flinders Street and then get off and jump on all the different lines. I'd go meet chicks all over Melbourne. Nothing stopped me, guys. Um, I had heaps of fun doing that, right? Going around, picking up birds, hooking up with them in parks and all that sort of stuff, you know, cricket grounds, that's where all that stuff comes from, you know, like live the dream. Now, what, what, what was the real game changer for me was when I got my car, right? So I always talk about the VN Commodore. So for guy, you guys who don't know, a VN Commodore is a 1989 um, Holden, all right? And I had a Calais with a velour interior, electric windows. I spent a bit of money, got the CD player with the flashing front plate, you know, like a mad dog, had the subbies in the back. It was a bit of a mad dog, all right? I had the tinted windows, had a pod filter on it to make it sound like a turbo. I thought I was a legend, all right? Anyway, had the VN and I came across one day, across my monster hunting um, this is where it all began. This is where it really took off, guys. So I came across a website called um, Adult Matchmaker. Adult friend? No, Adult Matchmaker was an Australian. It was like just filthy, you know, sex um, personals, really. It was, like, it was like an RSVP or something, but it was just like just blatantly for sex. Like there was no relationship stuff here. Um, you go straight on there and you find people who are just up for it. There's no trying to get there. It was just on the plate, right? If they liked your pictures or whatever, it was on. And this came at a time, this would have been 2003, um, and not many guys are doing it. Or if they were doing it, um, they definitely weren't telling anyone about it. I remember my mates used to sort of make fun of me or I used to laugh about it and say I was a loser because I was going and banging all these chicks off the internet. Like it was weird. It was a weird thing to do back then. It's like, oh, they're an internet person. You know, they must have they must be strange. They must be like Quasimodo. There must be something wrong with them. But I was like the Steve Jobs of monster hunting. Right? I was one of the first ones doing it online. And so adult adult matchmaker, like guys, you, to, you, to, you, to, you had to used to pay for that. I never normally pay for dating services, but I did when I was a kid. And this was quite expensive. You go back then, I think it was like 50 bucks a month back in 2003. So it's like probably like 100 bucks a month now or something, you know, something like that. Um, but I got good value for money because I was out every night in the VN guys driving all over Melbourne, all over Victoria. It wouldn't matter where it was, it was an hour away, it was two hours away, I was going. Like, that's how I can relate to guys when you get the um, the mind clouding bonus that I'll, I'll, I'll drive to fucking Uluru for a route. Like, like if I, when I was 18 years old, I was charged up, mate. I'm driving Adelaide. Who cares? Just get in the car, mate. It's worth it. So on adult... Matchmaker, I can't get into too much detail here, guys. Obviously, I'll get I'll get deplatformed, but just some stuff happened on there. Even to this day, that people wouldn't believe me. Or you wouldn't believe me if I told you the detailed stories about it, unless you actually knew me in real life and were like, "Yeah, this guy's the real deal," and he did do that. It's just some crazy stuff. Um, <laughs> I can tell you now, um, it's not for the faint of heart, right? What went on back then, but that sort of shaped me as a man. I've always been quiet. Um, a critical thinker when it comes to women. My dad, my dad was a real sort of strong type, and my dad was, I think, naturally is a bit red pilled in life in general. Like, and he'll just tell me stuff I'm what to look out for, and tell me about chicks. And he was really, you guys think that I am direct? Like, I get it from my dad, um, and he was just full on would tell me. I'd be like 12 years old, and he's telling me that, you know, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I'm in the car with dad on the way home from McDonald's and he's, he's telling me all this shit, you know. So I started learning this from a young age. I had my eyes open. So he was pretty good. I was pretty fortunate to uh, have my dad sort of tell me the way the world works, even though sometimes you think he was nuts. You know, looking back, all the things he told me was spot on. Um, so guys, basically, adult friend fighter, adult matchmaker. How many girls did I get off there? And this is not a brag. I don't know. A few hundred, I don't know, a lot. Like you guys won't believe me. Like, yeah, bullshit. I was doing it for two or three years and I was going out like almost every day or every couple of days um, with new chicks. It was just fish in a barrel. Now, when I say monster hunting, guys, I'm not saying these are all hot chicks. So don't go picture, picturing um, 
models here. A lot of them are fatties. I don't care. I just do what I had to do back of the back of the van behind the cricket club. Behind the cricket club, you go pick them up, meet them somewhere. They jump in your car. You end up down the cricket ground somewhere close to where you met them. That's where that comes from, guys. Behind the cricket pavilion and the van. Let's just say if you put a black light in the back of the van. No one would ever buy that car if that was done through a uh, sales inspection. <laughs> I can tell you that much. All right. So I got to about 21, 22, and I met a girl. Um, she wasn't off um, any of those dirty websites. I came across her in real life, a nice Polish girl. Really high maintenance, but really beautiful. So I saw, obviously she was the best that I thought I could get. So I went out with her for a few years, put up a whole bunch of bullshit, learned a lot about women in that time, um, about how a lot of them will push the boundaries, etc. Right from a young age, like oh, I had that pressure. I had um, uh, women barking down my neck and being bossy and being rude and being bitchy and uh, entitled and all that. Now the reason why, oh, why'd you go out with her then? Well, the reason why is because she was quite socially awkward. She was absolutely stunningly beautiful, guys, and I would not say this. Um, lightly, like a good solid nine out of ten, beautiful Polish girl, like white hair, blue eyes, beautiful. All right, that's why I put up with it. So I know why young guys will put up with shit from women because they they want to bang a hot chick if they get one. You just put up with anything, all right? But what other reason I went out there? She came actually from a really lovely uh, family. All right, her mom and dad, and they were really lovely uh, Europeans, uh, migrants, and. She used to be at home on the weekends with her mum in the kitchen cooking all weekend. Her mum was teaching her how to be a wife, how to be, um, you know, that role for the husband, exactly the, the, the role that the mother was playing for her husband. Um, and you said to me, well, she sounds pretty good. Well, yes, she used to do all those things, cook. Um, she was homely. She could fix clothes. She could do all that stuff. And when I was young. I was like 25, I think, when I broke it off with her. Maybe, yeah, 25. I couldn't put up with her anymore. And I, I've talked about her in a previous videos. Um, but she was um, very, very um, demanding and very rude, as a lot of Europeans can be really direct and rude and said a lot of nasty things that sort of got me to the point where I was like, yeah, I can't put up with this anymore. I'm giving it the world and I'm not going to put up with it. And so I, I dropped it. Um, and so that was really hard for me. That was a real eye opener to stand by boundaries. And I hadn't stand by boundaries um, for years until I thought, no, I've got to put my foot down. Um, and she crossed some boundaries and I got rid of her. So I practiced what I preached. Um, people couldn't believe it. My dad couldn't believe it when I got rid of her. He goes, I, he, he just thought that was it. He thought I was going to marry her. That was the daughter-in-law. He couldn't believe it. But I told him all about it. He goes, yeah, no, I get it. So guys, now this is where the fun starts. So I get back online once again. It's about 2006. There's like Facebook um, had come on the scene, 2006, 2007, Facebook. And I just cleaned up on there. They had this, um, there was two websites out at the time. Uh, one was called Oasis Active uh, and one was called Zeusk. Now, I think they I think they might both still exist, but they were like, oh, bottom of the barrel chicks on there. And that was my hunting ground, guys. I didn't care because I'd had the hot girlfriend. Um, I'd been chasing around the hot girls a lot when I was younger but I wasn't getting a good result. So I was switching on that, hey, hang on, let's let's go down a peg a little bit um, and try and get a result more often than not instead of getting absolutely nowhere spending money. So adult, uh, sorry, Oasis Active guys, for you guys at home who know what that is, put in the comments, absolute trash. You think plenty of fish is bad, All right? This is like, that makes plenty of fish look like top end supermodel chicks. Like some of the absolute scumbags of the earth that I came across and ended up banging them too. <laughs> hey, I was a young guy and I was already had a monster hunting throbbing bone. I had to go somewhere. Um, the amount, it was like nine out of 10 chicks were just absolute trash. When I say trash, like bogans or just weird or just, they're on there for a reason, right? Hunting for men on the internet. But there was a lot, a lot of girls that I went through there. And I did that for quite a while and then I actually met my uh, fio uh well yeah she became my fiance and we got married um soon after that so I did that for a little while long story short was with uh, my ex um we got married did all that stuff um so I was with her probably for five or six years in total and so on the other side of that guys which was about eight or so years ago now it's gone pretty quick no sorry about seven years ago um that's when the real damage happened because 
I'd been through the ringer. Um, I had uh, experienced women at their worst for a very long time. So I knew I was getting into this time. And when I say experienced women at their worst, I'd been married to someone who just trashed me. Uh, admittedly, guys, I put up with it, right? Um, I married her, so it's on me. But yeah, she was trashing me. Um, I got divorced, brutally divorced, uh, or separated from. Um, and so I was at a point, guys, I hit my heel turn, all right? So you know when Hulk Hogan, he went over to the NWO? That's what happened to me, guys. So jumped on Bumble, Tinder. Um, I jumped on Plenty of Fish, and I got to work. And at the time, so I kept my um, house that I bought um, well, for my wife, really. I didn't, she didn't put anything in, but we bought it together. Her name was on it, but she didn't put any money in. But anyway, long story short, I kept the house through the, the, the settlement. Um, and uh, let's just say it was a... Well, it is. I still have it. It's a beautiful home in a very blue chip area. And any time I got chicks anywhere near that house, guys, it was on. Right? So that was... That just took up my monster hunting to a new level. I had a house, a beautiful house that I was living in by myself. I was probably in the best shape of my life. So uh, as part of dealing with the divorce that I had um, was I just lived in the gym and I would go for walks because I was so frustrated and shit every night. I'd walk for two, three hours every night. You know, I'd, I'd wear out a pair of shoes every sort of two, three months because I was dealing with that hard, that hard time. But I was in the best shape of my life. I'd gone to the gym. I was dieting, right? I was living on my own. I was living like a... Um, Spartan, right? So I was just best shape ever ripped. Fuck. I was always been into my gym and all that, but that just took it to the next level. Like I'm talking sub 10% body fat here, like really top of the top rig. Anyway, with that combination, um, with me, um, guys, I'm about six foot, just under six foot four. So I'll just take, I'll just say I'm six four, but six, three and a half. So six four, um, been a very hard worker. I'm educated. Um, I'd done well at a global company, had a senior role. Um, I was ticking all the boxes for women, essentially. I had a really good curated profile. I had an Instagram, like a fitness Instagram, like a bit of a flog back then with all my muscles out and all that sort of bullshit, all right? And so with that combination, guys, especially on Bumble, oh, it was probably the most monster hunting that I've ever done in my life. And I'm talking, people ask me, how, how many do you think you went through? Oh, I don't even know, guys. Like, I know I said hundreds before I was like 23. I reckon that was, I reckon that's probably true. And I have no idea now how much it is. It's like you say to someone, because you get addicted to it, you do it day in, day out, and you start getting really good at it and getting lots of girls all the time. It's like saying to someone who's a chain smoker, how many cigarettes did you smoke last year? Like, you just don't know. You lose track of it, and it becomes part of your day. So it's something that is trivial um, and is exciting all right, it becomes just part of your day. It's like you get used to it. Uh, you do it. You get really nonchalant about it. You just don't give a stuff. And I can tell you now, guys, so it was a really interesting time of my life, and I learned a lot about women. Um, and I, so I'm going to tell you a bit about what I learned. I'm not going to get into the details of all the things I did. You can use your imagination here, guys. Nothing was off limits. Um, I will say one thing. What's interesting and what I found is um, even from uh, guys in my social circle, not all of them, but guys would actually judge me and try and put me down for living that lifestyle. And I used to say, oh, aren't you lonely? Or aren't you going to all this and that? And I go, no, nah, it's fucking awesome because it is. Like if you can pull it off, if you can have different chicks all the time, having a guy who's been married for 15 years ask you if you're trying to tell me that my life's shit and his is better than mine, I thought it was pretty laughable because I'd been married, so I knew what it was all about. So I did all my damage on Bumble and Hinge, guys. Um, I had the perfect profile. I was only slightly younger than what I am now. I looked very similar um, to what I am now, like same beard, um, you know, same hair, all that shit. So you notice I'm not wearing a hat today. Bit of a different one. Show you guys what I actually look like under the hat as well. Um, yeah, so guys, the reason why I think I did so well in there is... Um, the age range that I was marketing myself to. So I was 30, 31, 32, like early 30s, right? And the girls that are trying to lock me down are the same age um, or maybe late 20s. I've got some mid-20s. Um, 
and some younger than that. But really, my main, my main age range was women looking to find a really good looking candidate to be the husband, right? To, to lock to lock down and um, take off the market. And so I fully exploited that, knowing I was never going to do it. Because one thing I really learned, uh, gents, um, through the experience is you go on these dating apps, these chicks are um, interviewing you. So they're interviewing you to make sure that they're making a good investment of their time and effort. That's fair enough. But the way that it comes across and the way that I took it was a lot of these women don't love you for you because there hasn't been enough time. They're trying to fast track it to get a good candidate on the hook and they work it out in the back end. You've got a good job. You're well, you've got good genes. You're well put together. Um, you know, you're not a complete nufty. Um, they got good enough. I just want to lock him down, get married and quickly have a baby. It happens all the time. Like there'll be girls that I'll be talking to and then I don't talk to her from a year and they pop up in my messages and go, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I just had a little baby. And I'm like, what the hell? I haven't spoken to you in a year. you got a baby, you know? So you get a lot of women there, um, baby trapping guys, um, uh, pressuring guys into marrying them at that age. And a lot of guys say, yes, I did it. A lot of guys say yes, because they think the, the girls are going to bail on them and all that. So guys, I've been through there. Um, I've done that. And you guys are like, yeah, bullshit. You know, you haven't been with hundreds of women or whatever. I, I sort of brag for me, guys. If anything, I'm 39 years old. I'd be a bit of a flog if I was, if I was uh, bragging about how many women I've been with. And especially at my age now, I don't give a shit about that. Um, I don't even care about it. It's so impressive to me at all. It's just a lifestyle that I lived that gave me a lot of insight uh, into women. That's it. So I've been pretty high level with it. I've given you a little bit of details. I can't give you too much here. As you guys know, it's YouTube and uh, I will be off this platform pretty quick if I go into a lot of detail. All right. So I've got some notes here. So what are some of the things that I learned? Okay, number one, uh, going and dating, and I know it's a common um, complaint of many uh, men, um, is flaking. Like, so women have, what I really learned is the majority, I'm going to say all, right? Because I don't believe this. I did come across some really great women over the years. Um, fantastic women who have gone on to, um, you know, from the outside, at least, look like they have really good lives with husbands and babies and things now. So I, that's definitely out there. But I'm going to say the majority, and I always say this, the majority of chicks on dating apps, I'm going to say 90 to 95% are not. They're not for dating. They're not for anything serious than company and maybe a few dates here and there and backseat of the VN action. Like they're just not, they're not low risk enough to go further with, especially after my experience and the bad time I went through. I found that I, none of them, None of them are worth any of the risks that you can take on as a man. So flaking, no honor. You could have plans lined up, guys. You've gone to a lot of effort lining up a date. Um, you've been a nice guy. You've come up with a good idea, all that sort of thing. Next thing you know, it's five minutes before the date. You're supposed to get there. You're in the car. You pull up into the, the car park and you, and you look at your phone because you've been driving, so you're not looking at your phone. You've had your Google Maps on or whatever it is. And you got a message there. And this happened more times than I like to admit. Oh, I can't come tonight. Sorry, um, my mum's dead, or something. You know, something stupid like that. Or, oh, uh, my my sister's husband um, just left her right this minute. I've got to rush over there. I'm so sorry. I need to console her. And oh, the best friend's husband left her. Whatever bullshit they come up with, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. Whatever. So literally, you get to a date, all ready to go. That's why I stopped putting an effort in the end, guys. I just did it everything on my terms. Is you will get flaked on a lot, and women don't have a lot of women don't have honor for the plans they make, especially if you're just one of many options, which you are, like especially in online dating. All right, women are kinkier and naughtier than what the average man will ever know and experience. Now, the reason why, guys, I was able to sniff these chicks out, as you can tell, I'm very direct. I don't give a stuff. I'll just say what I'm after. I'll say all sorts of things for shock value. If a girl can't handle me, that's, it was one of my vetting things. If a girl can't handle my, a bit out there, you know, a bit, a bit, a bit full on like sexual jokes or innuendos, then I didn't want nothing to do with her because um, I would use that as a way to be a bit of a bloodhound and work out if she was going to be on my level and she was going to be what I'm looking for, which is someone who wants to get into it, um, have a good time, have some action, and see what happens from there. A lot of women are kinkier than what you'll ever imagine. Right, you'll have guys out there who are married to women or they've got long-term girlfriends living with them, not knowing that their girlfriend was probably out on dating apps just getting choked out and fucking putting a torture rack and spat on and, um, yeah, just fucking anal and just the dirtiest shit, like dirtiest porn-style sex, just getting 
used up like a human flashlight, all right? And those guys are not getting that from their girlfriends that used to do that with guys like me. <laughs> so a lot of guys, they don't want to hear it, but a lot of the time, a girl you're with seriously has probably had a bit of a past uh, and you're probably Mr. Safe, all right? You're Mr. Safe and she doesn't want to do those things with you. All right. Women are serial daters. So a lot of us know that now, um, especially a lot of you guys at home with all the internet and the TikToks and that. This, all these TikToks and shit, TikTok didn't exist. Um, then, so I learned that the hard way that um, women aren't sugar and spice. And I do make a lot of videos on this. Women aren't sugar and spice uh, and all things nice. They're just as filthy as men, just as sexual as men, um, dishonest as men and when it comes to cheating and things like that uh, than what anyone, any guy would believe, right? So they're not sugar and spice. They're, sugar, they're serial dating. Um, a lot of them are out banging guys. They do similar things to what um, I was able to do at the time, uh, which was... Um, more or less have um, a, a rotation, right? I have a, and sorry guys, my headphones went off, so it distracted me. I don't need them for this because I'm not playing anything, but um, having a rotation, having um, different buckets of girls. So I'd have girls, um, I know this sounds cocky, right? I'm not being cocky, I'm just telling you what I'll do, um, is I'd have girls that I knew would just straight up VN action, or later I had a VY Commodore guys in the later years, which I just got rid of. They're just for that. No one's ever going to know about them. You don't tell your friends about them. Um, they're never meeting your mum, etc. They're just purely um, flashlights. That's it. And then you got the ones that they're, they're 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 better than that, but they're not instant girlfriend material, right? They're ones that you'll see, you'll see, um, you'll go on dates and things. People still don't know about them. You don't really integrate them with your friends. Um, you don't um, tell anybody really anything about them. But you treat them nicer, and you and you do have actually. Um, a potential to be more. And they're the ones that are really good. And you're like, no, this one's a bit different. Um, a lot of guys will say, not all women, all women are like this. And they're not. They're, they're really good ones. And when you womanize um, and go out with a heap of chicks, you'll be able to sniff them out pretty quick. Um, you can definitely sniff out the slurries really quick, right? You become a blood hand, you get a second sense for it. As I said, guys, I probably talked to thousands of women, um, been with hundreds of them, um, and... Been on dates with probably thousands of them over the years. So you can you do get a sense. It's like if you think about it, it's like um, like a plumber or something who's an expert in their trade and they know how to fix a problem with two seconds looking at it. It's like I could just suss a girl out, talk to her for five minutes on the phone, and I've got a pretty good picture of who she is uh, in most cases. But yeah, so there are good women, right? All right, a bit of a tangent there, but there are some good women out there, um, and those ones go straight into the start dating them category. Very rare. Um, I was, I'm going to talk about my monster hunting in terms of post-divorce, right? Because that's the most relevant here. But post-divorce, I was probably really day in, day out monster hunting, uh, seeing chicks probably four years. Um, and I had enough, I just stopped. And I'll tell you why I stopped at the end of this video if you want to hang around. Um, for four years. And I'll say I met two or three women that um, the previous version of me would have probably considered seriously and, and would have been really good girlfriend material. But I was not in the headspace um, for that um, and blew those things up, you know, to my at my own fault, right? My own error because I was not in the right headspace for that kind of woman. All right, cheaters. So, yes, we all know guys cheat. We, we're, we're dirty pigs. We fuck everything and we go out and do that. Yeah, we all know that. But what society doesn't tell you is women do it, if not more. The same amount as men, if not more. But the thing is, women don't get caught. They're very sneaky. How do I know? I've had sex with lots of married women. Um, I've had sex with lots of women um, who have boyfriends. Do I know that up front? No, but I work it out pretty quick, uh, especially after the fact. Because sometimes they'll, they'll just tell you and they'll block and delete you. You will be their booty call. You'll be their root and boot. They'll pump and dump you, right? And go home with the husband, all right? So women do that. Now, does it happen all the time? No, but I'll probably be able to, I would say it would be in the tens of women that I came across. Did I know they were married? No, I didn't. Once again, guys, would I have done it? I don't know if I would have done it. I didn't really give a fuck back then. I wouldn't do it now. I was definitely not pursuing them. They were pursuing me. All right. As I said, I've done and seen things. I mean, put into situations that 
the average guy is never going to understand, comprehend, or believe. Something out of movies, if not worse than something in the movies. Uh, you just won't believe me. So I'm going to leave it there. If you guys want to know about it, maybe I can make Patreons about it um, and tell you guys a bit some of the stuff. But I do have some stories, guys, that are even 15, 20 years old that I still tell my mates today, and I love them. And they're like the greatest hits that I'll play around the campfire or when we're having a beer. They love it. So let's just say they are some pretty good stories. All right. There are even the ugliest chicks... When I say ugly, I'm talking like below average. I'm not talking Rosie O'Donnell's, but even them, they have more options than what I ever would have had. Um, they just have, especially at the advent of social media, um, dating apps, all that sort of stuff, limitless options with thirsty guys, even good looking guys, like guys like myself, I consider myself good looking. I'm not a top of the top. I consider myself probably above average uh, in looks with the height and, and my build and all of that. I, I would dumpster dive, no problem, right? I, I would go down to fives, fours. I, I wouldn't care. I don't give a fuck, right? A root's a root at the end of the day, especially when you're going for volume, right? I was a volume guy, not a quality guy. I admit it. I fully admit it. Full blown monster hunter. So I didn't give a fuck. Still probably wouldn't give a fuck if I was still out there. All right. Women never get told no. They're not used to being told no by men or men not going along with what they want. So when I would start saying no, so guys, I'm very um, direct, abrupt. I can be abrasive. Um, if I don't want to do something, I'm not fucking doing it. Um, when it comes to a girl, I'll just be, I'm not rude. I'm respectful, but I'm going to say no, I'm not doing it, right? If they ask me to go somewhere and I don't want to go, it's just a no, right? Whatever it is, they're not used to that. They're used to guys saying yes. So even though I might have even known a girl for one or two weeks and I told her no, I saw the ugly side of women um, at a very frequent um, impasse, guys, because when you say no and you don't back down, most of them will become abusive um, and will swear at you, say things to you, and block and delete you, whatever. All right, they move on to the next one. The no is the no. All right, short attention spans, right? So... What I really found was even like I would be with women and I, th and I thought I was a good catch and all that. Um, I just didn't at that time, even only sort of the last couple of years, I really realized this. But even then, I wouldn't realize I had girls really hot for me. Um, got girls who were basically asking me to have babies with them. I'm out there dating them. I start taking them on dates, start being a nice guy after being an unreliable brassy. And then they would be gone. They'll get bored of me and they move on to the next sugar hit right, on the dating apps. So they want what they can't have. They have short attention spans and they make highly emotional life decisions without thinking about long-term um, outcomes. So as I said, guys, I make a lot of comments on this in my other videos where I do the commentary and all that and I drips a bit of my past in there. I um, I dated, and not when I say dated, you know, I monster hunted a lot of women who were straight out of separations um, and divorces. Um, and I can tell you now, Every single every single time that they told me why they left, it was like a non-reason, right? It was a stupid reason. And that really got me thinking that very, very, very few women are worthy uh, of making a big commitment for. They have no honor. Very, And, and, and it, that goes back up to my first point about flaking. The, the, the two behaviors are interrelated. They just flake later on, right? And it causes maximum carnage. Anyway, so I would hear about, I've heard the worst of women. Um, them telling me, uh, I'm talking dozens, dozens of different women uh, around the same age range, you know, um, recently separated. It told me how they're fighting their husband's tooth and nail for money. And she deserves this and he's done this and blah, 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 blah. They tell you everything. It puts fucking goosebumps on my skin, even thinking about it today. All right. Most chicks uh, have unprotected sex. So guys, um, I actually got tested recently, so I'm all good. But I used to do that. I wouldn't even care or think about it. You just whack it straight in. They're not. I very rarely would a girl say to me, um, "Pat up." You know, do you have something? Very rarely. I would say one hundred. Like it's, it's almost never happened. I was even talking to a good mate of mine about this the other day. He's like, "Fuck, that's risky." And I said, "You just don't think about it in the heat of the moment, especially when you're doing the things that I was doing." I can't talk about it all here, guys. But um, yeah, you, that's probably the last thing you're thinking about in the heat of the moment. So a lot of them just don't do it. So they're, that's why a lot of STIs and shit are going around. I never had one. I'm not making that up, guys. I've never had an STI. Um, I've been very, very fortunate that I've dodged that because really I probably should have if you think about all the probabilities. Um, I haven't. All right. The last, the last big thing that I learned uh, about women is... I could go on for another two hours, guys. But another thing I learned was if a girl likes you, She'll do anything. If a girl is really, really into you, 
there's no excuse. There's no um, trying to line up dates and, and line up calendars and um, trying to find the right time. I mean, there's, no meet, there's no bullshit. They'll meet you as soon as you want to meet them. They'll meet you in the middle of the night. They'll drive two hours to your house and bring you a pizza. They'll do. They'll bang you behind a Chinese restaurant you know, next to the dumpster on a 40-degree day and it smells like rotten fish. They'll do it. They don't give a fuck because they're into you. They make excuses for the guys that they don't want. And so... After experiencing that a few times, and I did experience that when I was younger, but a lot more in my 30s, guys, because I was a bit more of a package that women wanted, that the, the power had turned. And so I had a lot more power and could leverage that and get girls to do things for me. All right. So we're already about uh, 35 minutes. Shit. All right. I'm going to keep going here, guys. Benefits. So what are the benefits of womanizing? All right. Uh, there's the obvious one. You got lots of sex, um, lots of variety. Uh, it's exciting. It's fun, right? It's a hobby. It is very time consuming, but for me, that was fun. I had a lot of fun doing it. I felt like I was playing a video game or something. I'm getting to the end of the level. It was like a conquest. The whole process, I enjoyed it. I got rejected heaps, guys. It wasn't like I was just out there and um, every single chick was up for it. No, no, I had to go through the same things that you guys go through. I know all about it, um, but I didn't care. It was all part of the process for me. I had heaps of fun doing it. The second one, yeah, okay, sorry, I can't read my own fucking handwriting, right? So you meet women, so as I said, guys, all my monster hunting happened online. I've never been an in-person kind of guy. I don't know, I do have a bit of an introverted personality, so me approaching people, I've always been really hesitant about it. So this is all about online dating. I've always been very good at that. You would meet women and hook up with women, have sex with women that you would not otherwise ever approach um, or meet or go to areas, you know, where they would live. So, for instance, you know, I'd go and drive out to bloody Geelong to bang chicks, um, drive to bloody Ballarat to bang. These are country towns, guys, you don't know. They're uh, sort of semi-regional areas. You know, drive an hour and a half out to bang a chick. It was all a bit of fun. And we'd go out and do that. Um Women of different backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, I probably wouldn't approach them. Um, not because I'm racist or anything like that, because I'd never really come across them. I'm Guys, I live in a very white area. Um, there aren't many black people, Asian people, Indians, whatever, um, South Americans. I dig all those. I'll, I'll, I've been with many different women of many different backgrounds. I could probably put a pin on a, on a, on a world and put it in most countries, I would say. Um, that's not a brag. It is just the truth. Guys, I've always liked variety and I've always liked non-white women. So it's variety and having sex with a lot of women from backgrounds that you wouldn't otherwise approach or come into contact with. Another benefit, as I've talked about, guys, I've got a channel with like 230 or 40 videos on it. You learn heaps about women. I could talk about this for the rest of my life, just the experiences and the things that I've learned just through seeing the behaviors and the repeated consistent behaviors that women show. Um... It really just shows you another side of the world that you didn't think existed. You didn't know that women were that way, all right? And you need to really, truly experience it firsthand, not watch TikToks um, and, you know, reaction channels and that. You can learn a lot of stuff from guys like me and um, other creators, I guess, who might have done the same things. But unless you've really done it, you've really done it and you've seen them, like, you know, it's like being a male stripper or something. You've seen women at their worst. They're fucked, all right? They're worse than dudes. Like, you just would not understand it. All right. Another, so last, the last really good benefit is, I think now, um, after probably 15 solid years, I'd say, of chasing women, day in, day out, guys. So another thing, I'm a hyper-focused person. So if I'm on something, I'm doing that 150%. There's no 50%, 180%. It's 150. As you guys will know, I've started this channel. I'm, every day I'm putting content out for you guys. I love it, and I'm very motivated. And, in, and the same thing applied for women. Um, I was just doing that day in, day out. I loved it. I had so much fun doing it. But you can become a bloodhound. You get you, you will start sniffing out different kind of girls and really um, knowing really quickly um, how to profile them because you come across so many. You've seen it all. You've done it all. Women aren't that different. You never really come across that many unique, different women. I would say, yeah, they look a bit different. They talk a bit different. Generally, they're all the same. Um, there are some outliers you come across. As I said, probably two or three women I came across I think would have been really good wife material. All right. All right. So just to wrap it up, I've got some negatives. Okay. It's addictive. 
So you get a sugar hit, you get a dopamine rush. So it's very similar. I can understand what the women who are probably getting far more action and more attention and benefits than what I am. You know, we make all these videos about the women's serial dating, uh, the dating apps, having the world at their fingertips. I got a little bit of a taste of that by getting a lot of attention from women, right? And I can tell you now, it's addictive. It inflates your ego and you don't value people. So as I said, there would have been some really good women there that I reckon if I was in the right mindset, it would have been would have been good long-term relationship material for me, I think. I still do believe in that. I, I just think it's very rare. It's very, very, very rare, all right? So I'm not a big towel guy, guys. I'm, I do see women, okay? I just fucking very, very careful with who I get involved with. But it's addictive. It's addictive to the point where it's like, when I stopped, I found myself wanting to download the apps again and talk to chicks because it's such a habit, right? You, you get addicted to that high. So it took me quite a while to get myself. It was like quitting smoking. When I say it was up there, with it was just as hard to quit, quit it. All right. So generally, I would say, guys, um, I'm an authentic and I'm a genuine person, but I found myself becoming... Um, a liar. I was lying about things because and, and becoming manipulative because I knew that if I would tell the truth about 100% what my intentions were, I would have no luck. Um, and as you know, guys, women, um, they approach dating in a very different way to what men do. So if you're telling them you just want sex um, to start off with, which is every guy wants that. You want to start with sex and then it leads somewhere. But women don't operate that way. They want to feel if there's some sort of commitment maybe there from the start. I don't know. It's very different the way they operate. If you tell them that, people people and women have always, a lot of women have said to me, and other people have said, no, let's be honest, don't lie about it. Um, uh, people will respect that. You'll find people that are up for it. Very rarely you will. But if you lie, be dishonest and manipulate, you'll find that the women that are saying these things to you a lot of the time, that they want something serious, they're a good girl, blah, blah, blah. It's all bullshit. And they're the ones that are the freakiest ones there are. And they're lying and manipulating to you. Right? So, yes, you just realize the negatives. Everyone's lying to each other on there in some way, shape, or form. No one's truly honest. So, it's a very, I would say, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it feels not real. Basically, you're not living in a real world. Everyone's fucking bullshitting each other. The guys are bullshitting the chicks. The guys, are, the girls are lying to guys, pretending to be nice and innocent. The guys are pretending they're not womanizers. The guys, obviously, I'm not talking about every guy. I'm talking about the subset of guys and girls that I do a lot of my shows on. There's sometimes there's collateral damage, so I have been guilty of this in the past. Um, being a fucking Steve-O or a Bryce, you'd probably do girls who didn't deserve it. Um, generally, I would stay away and not be a scumbag. I admit it, guys. I've been an absolute scumbag in the past. Lied, disappeared, ghosted people. Been really sort of sociopathic in some of the things that I've done. If you look back at it, that's why I stopped. But collateral damage. Every now and again, someone who you, you look back and you reflect on it, you go, yeah, no, I shouldn't have done that, right? So there will be collateral damage. That leads on to the next point. Drama. Drama will follow you guys. Drama will catch up to you. So you guys out there thinking that you're out there, you're getting free sex, which you are, if, if you're on the apps and you're not paying a lot of money, but you're going to pay somehow. They're not. It's going to come to get you. Is it going to be one month? Is it going to be a year, three years? Drama will come to you. If you are with enough women, drama will find you. Sometimes it can be very serious drama. I never um, had any real serious drama. I had a few sort of um, scares of women pretending to be pregnant um, and shit like that. Um, or telling me that they got an STI from me or something. I went got tested. I had nothing. Just so just weird bullshit. Um, women stalking me. Um, finding out where I lived. Stalking me. Sending me presents. Um... Well, this goes on, guys, messaging me 100 times a day. I've had crazy shit before, all right? So we need to be careful out there. So why did I stop? So for you guys who are still here 45 minutes in, thank you very much for starters, but why did I stop? Because you get sick of it. You just realize women aren't worth chasing um, like that. And I think it comes down to Getting a bit older, your testosterone level drops. It's just nature, you know? And it isn't everything I think about now, sleeping with chicks. So I got to about probably 35, 36. 
No, it's just it for me, guys. I just lost the motivation. Like, yeah, I, I still like women. Don't get me wrong. I'm not fucking a eunuch or anything or a fucking, I don't know. What do you call them? A bloody uh, asexual person? No. It's just that my that lifestyle I was living, that's just no more. All right? So that was it. Anyway, guys, look, I'll probably just drag this on for ages. If you do enjoy this kind of content, let me know. I'll make more of it. If you don't like it, let me know. I'll go back to the old stuff. Anyway, guys, thank you very much.